Interpower Corporation, the premier supplier for power system components with one week manufacturing lead time and over 4 million parts in stock. Visit www.interpower.com for more information. Today in Engineering Newswire, we're giving ourselves tattoos with 3D printers, rescuing a 36 year old satellite, and flying an experimental electric aircraft. Just what I want to do take to the skies in a proof concept. The electric E-Fan experimental aircraft performed its first successful public flight last week and served as the highlight of Airbus Group's, that's the old EADS, E-Aircraft Day in France. The E-Fan training aircraft is an experimental demonstrator based on an all-composite construction that was designed starting with a clean sheet of paper. Before the E-Fan, all other models were based on conventionally powered airframes, but this craft was designed specifically for electrical propulsion. The Electrical Energy Management System, or e is integrated into the aircraft and automatically handles all electrical features, simplifying system monitoring and control. Propulsion is provided by two electric motors with a combined power of 60 kilowatts, each driving a ducted, variable pitch fan. The duct increases static thrust, reduces noise, and improves safety on the ground. Another innovation is the landing gear, including two electrically actuated retractable wheels positioned in the front and back under the fuselage, plus two small wheels under the wings. The back wheel is driven by a six kilowatt electric motor, providing power for taxiing and acceleration during takeoff, reducing overall electrical power consumption, and most importantly, noise. Ground maneuvers and initial takeoff acceleration can be completely silent, which would be easier to notice if they didn't set the video to a power ballad. Roll it! Ooh, ah, ooh. So 3D printing is taking over the world. <laughs> well, not the world, but it's certainly weaseling its way into several new and uncharted industries. And now, thanks to a group of French design students, they're delving into the tattoo business. That's right, no more burly bearded guys with names like Spike, or Tiny, or Redwood, laying that ink. Now it's your MakerBot. The biggest challenge was that skin has a tendency to be incredibly flexible, not rigid like a typical 3D printing platform. By replacing the extruder with a traditional tattoo gun, they gave the thing a test run on some silicon. After a careful redesign to keep the victim's or client's skin as taut as possible, the team managed to create a small circle design on a brave volunteer's skin. Instructables even has the step-by-step -step instructions to turn your 3D printer into an artistic machine. So what do you think the PD&D crew did with the U-print that we have from Stratasys? A recent crowdfunding project with the hackers behind the Lunar Orbiter Image Recovery Project is attempting to recover the International Sun-Earth Explorer, or IC3 probe, which was launched in 1978 to study the interaction between the Earth's magnetic field and the solar wind. The spacecraft was then sent on its way to intercept Comet Geo Cabini Zinner in 1985 and then Comet Haley in 1986 as part of the Haley Armada. Afterwards, left in a heliocentric orbit, it was then used for investigations of coronal mass ejections until 1997, when it was decommissioned by NASA. The plan is simple. The team plans on contacting the IC-3 spacecraft, command it to fire its engine, and enter a near-Earth orbit to continue its original mission that began when it was first launched. If successful, IC3 will spend its retirement as a platform for citizen science with smartphone apps and a Twitter feed giving students direct access to the instruments on board the aging spacecraft. While the spacecraft carries no imaging cameras, 12 of the 13 probes on board instruments were still working back in 1999, and it'd be a powerful tool in the hands of educators allowing amateurs and students access to instrumentation to measure plasma, high energy particles, and the magnetic fields in Earth orbit. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. 
for the PD&D channel. I'm Chris Fox, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.